In this video, we're going to learn how to make our own ESP now to Blink Cloud Gateway using which you'll be able to send and receive data from Blink Cloud to your ESP32 port which you can further broadcast to all other ESP now connected devices. Now after learning about this gateway, we'll be implementing this learning by making a small demo project of controlling the appliances and monitoring sensors data on Blink Cloud whose data will be coming via ESP Now protocol. So this is going to be very interesting weekend project to be made. So let's get started with this video after a short ad. This video is sponsored by LTM which is a PCB designer based software company. Now if I tell you one very interesting feature of the software then here in LTM designer you can design rigid flex PCB. Now what is that? So till now you must have designed the PCB which has like rigid like solid PCBs if you are not able to bend. But here in LTM you can design a PCB in which some of the parts are rigid solid and some of the parts are flexible which can bend and the PCB can you know uh, we can bend it in a two-fold manner just like the modern day smartphone right. So this is a really very interesting useful and unique feature of the software. Well you can also try out this and many other unique and interesting features of this designer software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking on the link, you'll get access to the free trial version of this software. So go ahead, try the free trial version of LTM Designer software. Okay, so coming back to our video. So here, first of all, before starting with any other explanation, I will directly take you to the uh, workflow of the project, like how the things is working, how the data is being transmitted from one ESP to other ESP to two. Now, why am I doing this? It's just because this particular project requires four ESP32 and each ESP32 will be having a different code for it so explaining four different codes on YouTube will be difficult for me and it will also be confusing for you to understand as well so it's better I make you understand the logic the workflow of this particular project and after that when you go through the code it will be really very easy for you to understand so let me take you to the workflow explanation okay so for this project we'll be using four ESP32 board which is displayed on the board ESP32 1 2 3 and 4 out of them, the second ESP32 board has an OLED screen and push buttons connected to it. The third ESP32 has the DST11 temperature humidity sensors connected to it. And the fourth one has a relay module connected to it. Okay. So out of them, this ESP32 1 and 2 along with the OLED screen and push button is nothing but our PCB project. So this PCB we have prepared, which we'll be talking about it later in this particular video. Okay. So now let us uh, see how all the ESP32 boards are communicating. Okay. First of all, two, three, and four, all these three ESP32 boards are communicating with each other via ESP now protocol. And they all are configured in many to many communication protocol. That means each board can send data to other two development boards. Okay. So this board can send data to this two boards. This can send data to this two board and similarly this board can send data to these two boards. So many to many communication is configured in each of the board. Okay. And after that, the ESP32 1 and 2 are communicating with uh, between each other via UART communication. Okay. As I said, it is under the PCB. So we have connected a wires with them. So this is a wired UART communication. Okay. So this is how they are transmitted receiving the data. All the data, uh, whether it is uh, via ESP now or whether it is UART, is transmitted in JSON format only. And for that reason, I have made a video, a dedicated video of it, uh, which is uploaded on my YouTube channel recently, in which I have talked about how to send the JSON data using ESP now communication. Okay, so that was a really important video to be watched in case you want to make this project. Okay, so now uh, let us see the flow of the uh, project. Okay, so how the data is being transmitted via ESP now to the Blink Cloud dashboard. Okay, first let us start with the DST11 sensor. Uh, before that, let me make you clear that we have kind of defined a rule uh, in this particular project and the rule is the relay data will be stored inside the v0 variable only the temperature data will be stored inside the v1 variable and the humidity data will be stored inside the v2 variable so this is the fixed rule that we have defined similarly we have defined here as well like the relay data will be given to the virtual pin v0 the temperature data will be given to virtual pin v1 and similarly humidity data will be given to virtual pin v2 on our blink cloud platform so this is the rule that we have defined you you can change it but make sure you keep these numbers of the variable and the virtual pin same in case to track the data okay in case uh, or rather uh, to successfully transmit the data between ESP now and 
blink cloud for that reason we have to make some rules okay now let's start with the flow of the uh, project L let's see how we are sending the dst11 sensor to the blink cloud first of all it will be reading the dst11 sensors data after that it will be storing the temperature data inside the v1 variable and uh, humidity data inside the v2 variable and after that it will send or rather broadcast this data via json format to both esp322 and esp324 but what happens is inside the four uh, number uh, ESP32, we are only you know reading the data of V0. We are not at all reading or accepting any other data coming inside it. Okay, so this is the V1 and V2. So the data won't data will be uh, delivered to this board, but it won't be reacting to this data because it doesn't contain the data of V0. Okay, so but this board will definitely react to it. Okay, so it will receive the data in JSON format and it will pass on the same data in JSON format to this ESP32 board and not only that it will also you know fetch the actual temperature humidity value out of JSON data and display it inside the OLED screen okay so it will display the screen and it will also send the data to this board as soon as this board receives the data it will directly send this data to Blink Cloud Platform because this is connected with the Wi-Fi it is connected with the internet okay so the blink cloud will be receiving the data and after that it will be more uh, no displaying the data inside the temperature and humidity widget of our blink cloud dashboard so this is how it is sending the data via esp now to the blink cloud platform now let us see the reverse thing like how we are able to send the data from blink cloud to a esp now devices let's take example we have turned on the relay here so now v0 variable has the data one okay it is received by the blink cloud it this data will be sent to this particular esp32 board which will be further sent to this board via json format uh, using uart communication now this esp32 board will broadcast the data via esp now to both the devices but as i said this will react to these two variables only and this will react to v0 variable only so as soon as this receives the data it will be printed on the uh, serial monitor but it won't be reacting to the v0 data okay it won't be reacting at all but yeah this will receive the data and as it is the data from the v0 uh, variable or v0 virtual button it will react to it it will fetch the data in case it is one it will turn on the relay and it will turn on the bulb connected to it and this is how we'll be able to turn on and off the bulb connected to the ESP now devices from anywhere in the world using the blink cloud platform so this is the whole flow chart of how we are able to send and receive data between blink and ESP now and the logic for this particular thing is embedded inside code of each of the ESP32 boards. So now after understanding it, now if you go through the code, you will easily be able to understand the logic because we have put proper commands in the code. Okay. And if you're not able to understand, I'll request you to reverse the video and watch it again because this is really important thing to be understand. I hope you got the idea. Okay, so now I hope you already understood about the logic used in this project and also the flow of the data from ESP now to the Blink Cloud platform. Okay, let us move ahead and start with the hardware part of the project. So out of the four ESP32, one is connected with the DST11 sensor according to the circuit diagram. Another is connected with the relay module according to the circuit diagram. And the rest of two ESP32 are connected with each other along with the OLED screen, push button and power supply according to this schematic diagram. Now due to a lot of connection, we designed our own custom PCB for this project and gave its order directly to JLC PCB. I mean, you can order your own custom design PCBs from the LC PCB, which you probably know it already. But what you don't know is they also provide the SMT assembly service using which you can not only get the PCB, but you can also get all the SMT components used for this project already shouldered from the LC PCB. I already tried that service. It's pretty amazing, pretty convenient. And even you can try out that SMT assembly service by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Okay, so after ordering, we received the PCB at our doorstep and the PCB quality is really very amazing. So after receiving the PCB, we one by one shoulder all the components on it and after shouldering all the components, our project looks like this. Neat and very compact. So after that, we uploaded the code onto a respective ESP32 board. Now you can get the code for all the four ESP32 boards on our GitHub repository whose link is mentioned in the description of this video. Now be very careful while uploading the code onto the gateway PCB. Now here, the ESP32 on the left will be having the ESP Now code and the ESP32 on the right will be having the Blink IoT Cloud code on it. So be careful while uploading the code on it. 
Now, as we're talking about the Blink IoT Cloud, let me take you to my Blink Cloud account and let me show you how the template looks like. Okay, so here is my Blink Cloud dashboard and here inside the templates, I already created a template called as ESP. Now, inside that template, I have created three different data stream. One is the LD, which is uh, at uh, configured at V0 virtual bin, temperature, which is configured at V1 virtual bin and humidity, which is configured at V2 virtual bin that we already discussed while discussing the flow of the data. After that, I also created a web dashboard in which I have added a button on V0 and two gauge uh, widgets for temperature and humidity. So that's the changes I have made here. And after that, you just need to copy this template ID and device name and paste it inside the Blink uh, code, okay? So that's the only change that you need to do inside any of the code, okay? Only Blink uh, ESP code will be require some changes. That's the template ID and the device name, okay? So after that, you can upload this code onto the ESP32 board. Okay, so now let me take you to the Blink mobile application and let me show you how you can transfer the SID name and password of your Wi-Fi router to the ESP32 board. Let me show you. Because here I uploaded the new Blink IoT uh, code in this particular ESP32 and now I'll take my smartphone and here I'll open the new Blink mobile application and I'll click here and click on add device. Click on connect to Wi-Fi. Click on ready. Now it's searching for the nearby Wi-Fi network. So click on the join button to join to this ESP32 board. Okay, so now I'll provide the same name and password of my Wi-Fi router, which will be sent to the ESP32 board. Okay, it is sending and it is waiting to check. Okay, it got successfully uh, done and now I click on the continue button. Click on the done button and that's it. I'll click on exit to add. Okay, so we have successfully added uh, the Wi-Fi credentials into this ESP32 board and now here we can configure this and add a widget on the mobile uh, uh, dashboard as well just like we added inside the uh, web dashboard. Okay, so I'll add one button and two gauge uh, widgets. Okay, and configure the button to be set at data stream V0. This will be set to the data stream temperature and this will be set to the data stream humidity. Okay, that's the only change that you have to do inside this Blink mobile application. Okay, now everything is set and now let us see this project in action. So yeah, here is the project. So here is the gateway. That's the node one with the DST11 sensor. This is the node two with the relay attached on it. And on the gateway, we are able to see the temperature and humidity sensors data on the screen, which is temperature is 25 and humidity is 22. Okay, so we are getting the data via uh, ESP now. Now let's just check on the smartphone whether we are getting the data on the Blink ID platform or not. And here, as you can see, we are able to see the data of temperature and humidity onto the Blink ID platform as well. Now let's try to send data from Blink to the ESP now device which is this okay let's try to turn on the bulb okay so the bulb got turned on let's try it off okay so we are able to control the appliances and also able to monitor the sensors data via ESP now straight to the blink cloud platform using this uh, you know ESP now to blink cloud gateway so yeah that's the working of the project so yeah, that was the working of the ESP now to Blink Cloud Gateway. I hope you like this project. I hope you got to learn something new out of this video. If is it so, don't forget to click the like button and do motivate us by you know, liking and commenting below this video. Also, yeah, I want your comment like how was this project according to you? I personally like this concept of you know receiving the data from ESP now and throwing it to internet to blink on any other cloud platform what are your thoughts in this particular video or on this particular video do let me know in the comments of the video now the question is i have put some buttons and leds on the gateway so what's the purpose of it so the purpose of it is i want to you know send the data based on the buttons as well for example if case there is no internet connection i still be able to control the appliances connected to espnr devices and for that i have used this button so i can program this button according to my need okay so you can even program this button according to your need uh, it's uh, like GPIO pin is available in the schematic. Go ahead, check the schematic and attach the code of this button in case if you want it. Talking about the LED, then I have attached the LED to see the status of the internet connectivity, whether it is connected to the internet or not, and also to uh, see at what time the data is being sent. Like whenever the data is sent, I want an LED blink. Okay, so I have used two different LEDs for two different purposes. I haven't included that particular thing in the code as of now. 
future i'll definitely update the code to add these functionalities as well okay so do stay tuned for that also all the necessary links are down in the description of this video and yeah that being said i'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next one to explore learn share with me techie sms